Most of the diviners claim 100% accuracy. But what if divining does not work? What if it's pure fiction? If they walk over the pipes and try to guess the right one, then their chances of accidental success are 1 in 10. 10%. That's the figure to remember. 10%. Value is roughly uh, fourteen thousand. Uh, fourteen thousand dollars, approximately. Right. So if they win, it's the purest gold yeah. in Australia. Right. Now, what's Australian bullion? It's Australian bullion company gold in it. The purest gold in Australia. What's his first name? Mike. Mike. Mike, can you come here? Is that? Do you want to just check a divining yeah. thing on that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Dad. Oh no, you. So you'll be doing the gold one. Oh, no, you wanted to walk it. Yeah, I did. No, so you'll be the next water one. No, so I shouldn't try it. No. Right. Well, you can well, try it now if you want to. All the diviners claim the ability to detect metal. The testing procedure is simple. First, each diviner satisfies himself that he can detect the gold inside the cardboard box. And then the gold is hidden inside one of ten boxes. How did the gentleman with the hat go? Not very well, uh, Bob. Uh, in test one, uh, the gold was in box six, he picked number four. Test two was in number seven, he picked number two. Test three was in number seven, he picked number two. In test four, in box nine, he picked number one. In test five was in box nine, he picked number six. So he didn't get any right at all. During the day, more than 100 test runs over both water and metal are made by the diviners. Most, most of you estimated that you would be 100% successful. When the number of trials is added together and the chances were 1 in 10, that is 10%. 10% was the chance by purely mathematical chance, not with any ability being exhibited, just the fact that it would be done by throwing a coin or throwing a dart into a board would be 1 in 10 or 10%. And the total results were? Well, I'm going to read out the metal results and tend the other one. Uh, the metal results with the brass, we had no one chose the brass out of 26 tries. So that's 0%. And with the gold, there were four correct decisions out of 35 attempts, and that's about 12%. So the average for the complete metal, gold and brass, today was 6.6% which is probably a little bit less than what you get by chance. And then in the water dowsing, uh, 10 uh, out of a total of uh, 50 tries, there were only 11 successful attempts, which was 22%. Uh, the total of everything, that is to say the brass, the gold, and the water, uh, meant 111 tries were undertaken. There were um, a total of 15 successful and that makes approximately uh, a percentage of 12%. So the result was just a little over the 10%. Well, it's, it's equivalent to throwing a dart uh, at random into a dart board or flipping coins or choosing cards at random. It would seem from this evidence that all of what we have done today, and this is in agreement with other tests that I have conducted in other parts of the world, as I've said, it would seem to indicate that dowsing as a force simply does not exist except in the imagination and in, in wishful thinking. Psychologists will tell you there's such a thing as a ideomotor reaction. A ideomotor reaction is an unconscious reaction in which the person who's operating the machinery or whatever unconsciously tilts or very, very slightly changes the position of the hand or however the thing is held. Now, by this I mean with a dowsing rod, when you hold a dowsing rod like this, the dowsing rod is tensed. It's enormously tensed. There's a lot of energy put in the thing. It's hard to keep it level. If you're using the rods and they're sticking out like this, it's hard to keep them level and straight as well. In order to make them move back and forth, the tiniest movement of the hand or the tiniest flexing of the wrist is the only thing that's necessary for them to move and move a great deal, either whip up or down or diverge or cross in a great big motion. 
because of that idiomotor reaction comes in. If you believe, and remember as Dick said, when you fellas knew the water was flowing in the pipe, and you were told the number at the beginning, it was flowing in pipe number two, for example, it was there, you were assured that it was there, your reactions were very positive. And you were right, of course, the rods moved. From then on, it got very difficult, and then the decisions were wrong from then on. Not always wrong, but certainly well within chance. Green shaded areas show the extent of Australia's underground water. It's hard to miss. Idiomotor reaction, extensive groundwater, and its total failure under test conditions. This should lay to rest the phenomenon of water divining. Of the dowsers who are here today, I'd like to see a show of hands. How many still believe in dowsing? Let's have a show of hands. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. By the way, you guys, the offer is still open. I've just checked forty thousand dollars. If you can get together in a group and come up with something that we can test, any paranormal activity or water dividing or something, Anytime. it's open. We're genuinely interested in trying to at least get the minutest skerrick of evidence. I'd love to have something.